Good evening and welcome to our online healing service. Hallelujah. I am so glad that you guys decided to join us tonight. God is so good and he has been moving just beautifully in our midst, um, in the midst of our National Daniel Fast, as we come out of Hanukkah, as, as the Lord ministered to us about Christmas yesterday, during us about temple service, through the truth of the spirit, like he is absolutely moving right now. And I pray that he is strengthening and encouraging you because the warfare has certainly been intense. It's not just you. <laughs> it's certainly me, my household, my family. Everybody's been calling, texting, and emailing me. But, you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. And God is actually lifting up a standard in us. He is raising us up. And that's really what this fast is all about. He's cleansing us of the defilement, those things that make it hard for us to really discern his will. And he is guiding us into a, a place of greater alignment with him and greater intimacy with him. This allows us to be useful to him in this end time battle that we are experiencing, particularly for the soul and future of our nation. And so let us pray as we seek God to have his way this evening during our healing service. Father, we lift you up and we worship you, Lord God, and we invite you into this healing service. We ask that you would move by the power of your spirit, that you would have your way, leading, guiding, and directing us in the name of Yeshua. We ask, Lord God, that you would draw us up together with you, that we would be seated in heavenly places to see from your perspective our own soul condition, our, our families, households, and lives, Lord God, that we would see you know, what's happening in our communities and in our nation from your perspective, that we would fully repent, turn ourselves to you, that we would create atmospheres that welcome your presence, that you would be able to come and bring a blessing rather than having to come in judgment. Lord God, we want you to come and dwell among us, but we know that if you come in our current condition, Lord, you have to address our sin. We ask even now in the name of Yeshua that you continue to bring down strongholds, Lord God, continue to remove principalities, powers, and rules of darkness in this dark age, continue to deliver us, hallelujah, Lord God, from everything that would obstruct our relationship with you, everything that keeps us in cycles and patterns of sin and mindsets that oppose kingdom thinking. We praise you even now that you are yet transforming us, that we would be kingdom citizens and your ambassadors in the earth. Yes. We bless you for it, Lord God, and we praise you even now that you are absolutely at work, Lord God. Help us to agree with you and do your work in the earth, that it would be on earth in these United States as it is in heaven. We praise you even now. We bless you, Lord. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I am excited because um, Watson and Michelle David are leading us in worship tonight. And our report out is going to come from Watson David. He is going to share with us what God is doing among the men. And this is so important because, like I said, the warfare has been intense. But the Lord is raising us up. And so I praise God. I'm looking forward to that report out. And then, of course, I'm going to give you an exhortation tonight as we look at the foundation of our nation. This is exactly what we're praying about in this National Day of Fast. So it's very important that we look at it. Of course, you know, I'm Apostle Marquita Brooks. Um, I lead the Invitation Movement, and I'm also the leader and the founder of the Truth of the Spirit that oversees the Invitation Movement. And so I'm excited that you joined us tonight, and we are about to go into God's presence as the Davids lead us in worship, and we allow God to minister to, to, minister to us, removing obstructions and, 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 and boundaries and barriers that keep us from him, but drawing us closer to his presence that we might be more like him, that we might be transformed by his glory and demonstrate his character in the earth. Now we're going to have some worship. Amen. Hallelujah. We agree with heaven on this night. Hallelujah. We agree with you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah. Regardless of the obstacles, God, we agree with you. Hallelujah. Regardless of the struggle, we agree with you, God. Yes, Lord. Oh 
Making war, making war.
just a moment to rest and refresh in his presence. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't been doing so, please make sure in every opportunity you have to worship God, that you're also releasing your burdens, your cares, your concerns, your fears, all of it unto him. It's because he is able to minister to you. He is able to, to transform you and to remove those things that are not of you so that he can then strengthen you. He can pour back into you the things that you stand in need of. And this is so important. This is essential. It's essential because the Lord is not going to pour his great virtue over our vices. He's not going to pour his strength over our weaknesses. Instead, he empties us. He removes the weaknesses so he can give us strength. He removes our vices so he can give us his virtue. He heals our wounds so that he can pour a beautiful healing balm into us. And it's enough for us to even bless others as well. Just by being a friend, a family member, by sharing the truth, praying for someone, sharing our testimony, we're able then to pour out the beauty that he pours into us. All of this is what I call the great exchange that should be happening in worship. We're giving him all our mess, <laughs> all of it. And then he's giving us so much beauty, so much virtue in exchange. And, and, and that is actually what he desires. He designed it that way. Uh, most of us, we want to give God something good. But the truth is, apart from him, we aren't good and there is nothing good. <laughs> we got to give him all the mess so that we can be empty vessels, broken as we are. Then he can fill the empty vessels after he heals them. And see, if you think about any type of vessel, like, a, like pottery, like a pot, if it's broken, you can't fix it while there's stuff constantly being poured into it. Because literally, that's actually going to make the, 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 the break even bigger. It's got to be empty. So then you can remold it, recast it, reshape it, and, and then fix what's broken, and then you can refill it. And that's exactly what God does in us. 
and he does it during worship. <laughs> the, the teaching, exhortation, the testimonies is all so that we might be able to say amen, be discipled and matured, that we could then use this beauty that he's given us in worship. But it's in worship that this happens. So I pray that, that encouraged you, and, and I'm looking forward to the report out testimony that's coming forward from Watson David, our, our worship leader, praise God, he's going to share with us what God is doing among men, and I'm so excited about it, um, because God is absolutely at work, amen, I'm going to hand it over to you, Watson. Amen, amen, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> where do I begin? First of all, we just got through celebrating, <laughs> celebrating Hanukkah rededication and uh it's very interesting because um when we were playing the game dreidel you know it, it talks about um what is that nash gadol haya sham and a great miracle happened there but i have to say that you know non gimel hey pay because a great a miracle happened here um god is the reason why we're here a miracle happened in this place i'm not saying just in america i'm talking in this physical building the way how God put everything together, I can't say that is because of my real estate prowess, knowledge, or anything like that, because they had nothing to do with it. Um, but God is just faithful. Um, so Hanukkah for us really started back in May of this year. Now, actually, let me let me be honest. Actually, Ju July of last year, you know, we had to, we were displaced and um, we had to move out because the owner of the property wanted it back. Just plain and simple. The lease was up and he, he wanted it back. He was trying to sell it. And I'm not going to put his business out there. And he's a good guy. But the bottom line is he was trying to sell it. And we weren't in a position to buy. And so we had to move. But didn't know where. So it's almost like Abraham, take up your family and go to a place I'll show you. You know, that type of thing. And I wasn't very fond of that concept. But, it, <laughs> but the bottom line is we had to go. And so an awesome brother stepped in. We, we became friends the year prior. He stepped and he said, before you and your family sleep in your van, you will uh, find a place in my living room for you all to stay. And he did just that. And I'm thankful because a lot of saints that they talk good game and they mean well, but sometimes they don't count the cost. And this brother, I really believe he counted the cost and then some, you know, um, we, we were there longer than I wanted to be. We were there almost a whole year. And it was, um, you know, every day I was like, God, I'm thankful for this roof over our heads. We don't have to sleep in our van or go to a hotel and spend money, whatever, this and that. But I can't stay here. This is a temporal thing. They try to make it as comfortable as possible. But I'm like, this is their house. I can't govern my family in their house the way I'm supposed to. Because their kids have a certain set of rules. My, my child has a different set of rules. Slightly different. It's not that different. The point is, um, God opened up a door. We were driving, going to the laundromat. My wife spotted a sign in the window right here. And she said it said for sale for lease. And so yeah, this car went up on two wheels. We turned around. Thank God no police was behind us. And, and we got in the parking lot. And there were two signs. And so we called all the numbers, left messages on all of them, you know, because we didn't know what belonged to who. Because there's another property behind us. And we believe in God for that, too. But the bottom, the bottom line is we called the guy. Um, when he could meet us, Michelle wasn't available. Michelle had to work. But we came in, we saw the place, and I said, and I remember my prayer being, Father, I've been paying two leases, and that has been a strain on our finances. So is it possible to have a place that, um, where we can have the school up front, but still do the school in front, but we can live in also and pay one thing? And this apparently is that place. It's right by the road. You pass by it. It has a sign out, a place for a sign out front, so I don't have to go to the city and get a permit to see if I can put up a sign. It's already zoned commercial. Praise Jave. And, and so we called the realtor. Gabby and I came in. We walked around, took, uh, took pictures, but that was not enough. I said, my wife needs to see it. How about this? First favor. He gives us the lockbox code to come back when we wanted to. That's crazy. Because they ain't supposed to do that. But um, the bottom line is, well, maybe he can because it's his company. But the bottom line is, we came back, Michelle and I, we all were in here. We walked around. We sat and it has two fireplaces, one in the lobby, the living room and one in our bedroom. So we sat in the bedroom one and we sat down and prayed. And I said, Father, this is for us, let it, let it be so. Um, our finances, we're trying to get that in order the whole nine. Fast forward, how about we're in temple service and um, I think it was Ella to me and said, is there anything that you, you need? And I said, just pray for this. We found a house, a property that we really believe meets the need. And if it's for us to have it, that God will make the provision. Now understand our sim a stimulus check came earlier that week, okay? And so she's asked me, is there anything you need? I said, yeah, we need this amount for a down payment. 
um, we already got a security deposit. So she said, okay, I'll keep that in prayer. I didn't know she was going to go back and tell the crew, but she did. <laughs> they were praying, and this is wild service is going on. I'm, I'm going to have to throw you out there, Apostle, because um, this is what's going on. She's texting, not texting, but in the chat room, sending me stuff or messaging or what have you, while the service is going on and keeping a straight face. And <laughs> I said, but uh, we'll believe, um, Yahweh, that the end of service that you have what you need. We didn't even have to wait till the end of service. She said, I'm sending that to you right now. And I said, come on. I'm like trying to maintain my disposition online because I'm about to jump up and throw stuff in the air. And whoo, <laughs> God is so awesome. And so he allowed us to move in in May, the latter part of May. And, you know, June was covered and stuff like that. And I'm just saying it's like, it's just amazing because when we started moving, actually before we moved in, Apostle and all the elders, ministers, they came through and we covered the four corners of this property because this property was used before. There was a barbershop about a year and a half ago, but it was also used for psychic readings. And you know what comes with that, all these mediums and spirits and all that type of stuff. And they still try to come back because of sidebar, just this morning I got attacked. I was waking up, wide awake, fully coherent, could not open my mouth. And I'm like, and then, you know, the thought never came to say Jesus. The thought, I'm like, you sure, you sure, you sure, you know, and I finally got it out. But it's like, I could not move. I couldn't move muscles in my face. I said, I bind whatever spirit this is in Yeshua's name. And it's interesting because tonight, Michelle was like saying, we have to do a burnt offering. She's been saying that. She, we wrote it up and everything else. So after this, we're going to have our communion do the burnt offering and everything else and, and, and really set, set the stage. But I'm looking at how God is doing stuff, bringing people, um, new clients and all that type of stuff. And, and then, so let me fast forward to the men. Um, it's interesting now that we're talking about Christmas and Saturnalia and all that stuff yesterday. How about Friday? I was talking to one of my students about this very thing. Friday. You know, he's a believer. You know, he, he, so you know Jesus, you know, they said the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. I said, yeah, that's what it says in that text. But it, I gave you the example before. People used to call me Lester for no reason. That was not my name. You couldn't write a check for Lester. My, my boss did it, and I couldn't cash it at the bank. And so it's, if you're calling the wrong name, you're not having the authority. You know, I could say I'm, I'm, I'm Joe Schmuckatelli all day long, but until I say I'm, I'm officer so-and-so of so-and-so's law department, I have no authority. And so it's the same thing here. Uh, not bashing folks who say Jesus because we were in that also. But I'm looking at how the Hebrew roots of the faith has helped us transition out of that. And I'm seeing things come into alignment. I'm blessed because my family is in agreement with this because I'm talking to some brothers who they're embracing it, but their, their spouse is not so much. And it's understood because holidays like Christmas, Valentine's Day, uh, Easter, all of that, Lupercalia. Yeah, you know, all of that, it has, it has its hooks in us. This, this Greco-Roman set, set up is really ingrained in us. And so I'm excited about talking with the men because I realize that if men find out the truth and they walk in the truth, God is going to handle the rest of the family. The family needs to see the man solid in the word. And I say that not to make it sound like I have attained. I'm going to be like Paul. Not that I have apprehended. <laughs> but, you know, but the bottom line is... Um, as, as I embrace this and I sit down and I study and I tend to just meditate on what we went over. So I may not say a whole lot to people all the time, but I, trust me, I'm studying this stuff because I want to make sure that I'm honoring God. All these years, I thought I was honoring God. And I don't want to be one of those people that hear, depart from me, you work of iniquity or you work, uh, work of lawlessness. Lawlessness is not observing the Torah and for 48 years, I have not been fully observer, observing the Torah. How many more people are like this in the kingdom who, who think they're in the kingdom? And so there's a fire now that I, I got to be honest. There's a fire now that I didn't have when I gave my life to the Lord. There's something different about it. Because, you know, I remember people, the brother, give your heart to the Lord. And, you know, he'll do this and this and that. So I gave my heart to the Lord. I'm like, okay, still going to church. We're singing hymns. She's still in a wheelchair. He's still an alcoholic. What is this power y'all talking about? You know, I still struggle with certain things. What is this power y'all talking about? And so it's not to sound judgmental, but it's just that if there's power, like they were talking about in Acts, 
It's a power where Peter and John went to pray. That's a song we used to sing. Peter and John went to pray. We met a lame man on the way. He asked for alms, held out his hand, and this is what Peter did say. And he went walking and leaping. because they're like, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Yeshua, rise up and walk. Come on, man. We're supposed to be doing stuff like that and dance them because Yeshua himself said, greater works you shall do. And why? He only had three years of ministry, so we are going to do greater works because we have a longer lifespan, but we don't have the greater works because we're not aligned with the truth. And so my heart is like fluttering right now because I get to talk with men one-on-one -on -one in groups, or however God sets it up. As a matter of fact, just today, I was with Gabby and Petco getting dog food. And this guy, I saw that um, he had a mask on, we were talking and everything. And so I don't know what caused me to ask the question, but he's like, you know, I, I, oh, he was wearing a, uh, what looked like a yarmulke. I said, so you, are you Muslim or Jewish? What's, what's the deal? He said, no, I just wear this, you know, just because. I said, your head hot, your head cold? He said, no. And he started laughing. That was the icebreaker. I tried to do silly stuff to break the ice. But the bottom line is we started talking. It didn't matter that there was a line behind us. He was cool with talking. And he was like, you know, I've been studying this stuff. And, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm more spiritual. And I was like, uh-huh, okay. And I'm just listening because there's going to be a time when God allows me to say what I got to say. But I said, look, look at man, I enjoy talking to you. Take my number down. And uh, I have a men's group coming up on Tuesday. Give me a call. Let's connect. Let's do this. I'll go back to the store if I have to find this, brother. But the bottom, the bottom line is I'm realizing that the reason why our society is out of whack is because men are not where they're supposed to be. I don't even care if they're in the church building because that, the, the enemy is in the church building. He inhabits the front bench where the deacons in them sit sometimes. So I'm just putting it like it is. You know, I'll take fire because that's what I'm built for. But... <laughs> Yes, it's on Tuesday. Uh -huh. So, so the, bo the bottom line is, the bottom line is I, I'm determined to see men walk in their full purpose. I love Dr. Miles Monroe because he said it best in his book, The Purpose and Power of Man. When a man doesn't understand the, power, the purpose of a thing, he tends to abuse it. So that's why you have domestic violence because the man, well, he probably wasn't supposed to be the husband to that woman, but if he doesn't understand her purpose, he abuses her. Um, when, if you don't understand the purpose of a car, you will abuse it. The purpose of anything, you'll abuse it. So it's all about us discovering a God-given purpose, and more importantly, walking in it. Because when we start walking in it, then 1 Peter 2 and 4 makes more sense to us now, the spiritual sacrifices. Everyone wants to quote 1 Peter 2 and 9, which was our favorite scripture. It was in our wedding. It was our scripture for our wedding. We are royal priesthood. A whole, everybody likes that part. But then there's work that has to be done. And so I'm looking at, okay, um, spiritual sacrifices, what that look like? Well, let me tell you. It looked like this here document called Burnt Offerings. <laughs> okay. You know, go to burntofferings.org. Not burnt offerings. It's burntoffering.org. I got a binder full. <laughs> I made several copies because brother going to be writing and just writing and writing. Because it's the journey. Our salvation is not, okay, I'm saved now. Put that down. Move on. That is truly a Greco-Roman's mindset. You know? I'm working through salvation. I'm being saved. I'm being transformed. Yes, Yeshua has accomplished it on, on the cross, but I'm walking in that, towards that maturation. So I'm not there yet. We have not arrived. And so when people say, well, he's supposed to be a Christian. How are he going to do such and such? Excuse me. He is. And he's walking just like a baby falls when it tries to walk. Is he less human because he fell down? No, he's still a human. So you're not going to kick him out of the human species because the baby fell down? You pick him up and help him walk. That's how we need to embrace one another. Brothers are going to fall mess. And I tell them, when, when, we come to the, when they come to the truth of the word, or they give their heart to the Lord, I, the first thing I tell them is, so let me be real with you, bro. You're going to screw up, like maybe in the next five minutes. Somebody going to do something to spin you up. You're going to mess around. You might cuss if that's something that you were doing. Um, I'm just being real with you. It's not to say that, hey, um, embrace that, but just know that that is part of your removal from this type of stuff. The enemy has his claws in you and he doesn't want you to move from his camp. So he's going to fight tooth and nail to keep you. He's going to bring that girlfriend that you hadn't seen in ages. He's going to bring her right back up. That, that, that you used to smoke, you don't smoke no more. He's going to bring that right back up. People are enticing you. I know because I've walked through it. And so this is where our talks need to be real with the men because we're always talking about how much money we make. And we do that undercover. It's like, yeah, man, on the job, I was supervising these dudes and Trying to let everybody know you're a boss. But the, the reality is you're bragging about how much money you make. 
you know, yeah, you know, I gave my wife a, you know, a Audi five, you know, Audi whatever it is nowadays. I don't even know what it is. I had a five thousand. That's back in eighty nine, ninety. But the point is, <laughs> I don't want to get off topic. The point is, we talk about superficial stuff. The game. How many women, for those of us who are still on that level, um, drinking, getting smashed on the weekend, superficial stuff. And the reason why we do all of that is a cover-up. It's a facade. We want to still seem macho. We want to seem like we got it together. I tell you, this Greco-Roman thing is so ingrained in us. When we were boys, we were programmed. You fall on skin your knee, <laughs> stop crying like a little girl. What boy wants to be called a little girl? None. So we suck it up and we internalize all this anger, this frustration, and then grow up now, at least physically we grow up, but mentally we don't. And now we have to enter this thing called marriage. And now I got to talk about feelings. What, what, what's that about? Because the whole time I play with inanimate objects, cars, you know, hammers, choo, 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 things that don't speak back. Meanwhile, girls are playing with dolls and they're setting up whole skits and soap operas with their dolls. They're learning more rela relational uh, work than we are. It's time for us to change that around so that we as men can teach our boys, and our daughters too, but mostly our boys, how to love for real and how to be honorable for real, how to walk in integrity. Spiritual integrity is very important. Right, Karina? Because spiritual integrity is like, <laughs> that's part of our, our lesson. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on the spot. But we talk about reading the word, speaking the word, applying the word, and then teaching the word. Because a lot of people can read the word, and a lot of people can speak it but very few of us apply it. And so it's very important that um, we, especially with the men, we learn this and we walk in it and hold each other accountable. You know, I was on another men's meeting some time back and uh, I had to put it out there. There's not a man on this call that can say they've never struggled with pornography. That is one of the biggest plaguing things with men. Why? Because we're visual. And so we need to be real about this. We got pastors and deacons and apostles and bishops who still struggle with this and they don't feel they have anybody to share this with. Why? Because you're going to run off and possibly put them out there. We need to set an atmosphere where men are free to be men. And ladies, this simply means that when they're on their call, do not interrupt. You know, if you have to use a text message, but don't come into the room. I got to go change the lock of mine because they just barge in from time to time and a guy's in the middle of something deep and personal. And so they, they don't know. They don't know. So I have to put an intercom system or something. We'll figure it out. <laughs> But, but I'm blessing God because, one, we celebrated Hanukkah for the first time in our own home. Last year, we celebrated it in someone else's home. And I'm thankful for it. It was, it was a cover. We had what we needed. Cover over our head and a warm place to sleep and eat and fellowship. But now we're in a different season. Come out of Egypt. We walk, we walk through the wilderness. We're going into the promised land. So we can't think like how we used to think. We can't operate like how we used to operate. And this is where the burnt offering comes into play because... We have to really give a lot of these things up to the Lord. So I employ, I employ my brothers. I know it went over 10 minutes, but I want to bless my brothers. This is where a safe place where you can come and just speak your heart and know that there's no judgment, no condemnation, because we're all in Yeshua Messiah, you know, Messiah Yeshua. We're not, we're not here to condemn anybody. Not one of us have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. So I, I want you all to know, wives especially, know that when your husband is on this call, it is very, very important because he's going to bless you as he gets transformed over and over again. So I thank you, Apostle, for this time. There's a whole lot more I could say, but the bottom line is um, we live in a miracle right now, and I'm about to paint it on the fireplace. So, so God is awesome. And by the way, December 31st, the party is here live. So make your way down from Richmond. I'm serious as a heart attack. We're going we gonna to eat. We're not going to gorge ourselves, but we're going to eat and, and fellowship and, and celebrate what God has done because this fast, even this Daniel fast, has really revealed a lot in myself. And, and, and my wife, she's been bringing stuff to me. Even Gabby, my goodness, I'm sorry, Tuesday night, we had such an awesome time at the dinner table. Gabby started sharing and bringing up all these things that we didn't know existed. And I was like, you know, God, thank you that she has an atmosphere where she can share that. Now, she's been holding it for a while. And possibly because we didn't set the atmosphere for her before. But I'm telling you, once we did this transition, she's excited about when people ask, well, what are you? you know, what do you mean? Like, are you a Christian or Catholic? No, I'm Jewish. She says it was such a almost snobby. You know what I'm saying? I'm Jewish. You're not? You know, that type of thing. <laughs> so, but I'm thanking God because she has embraced it. And she's not uh, pining over the Christmas holidays. She's looking at the fact that we are Messianic. And we celebrated Hanukkah and 
built up a, a PVC Hana Kiyad and she was a part of the planning and helping me with the idea. All these things. So we're building our own traditions through this Hebrew roots of the faith. And I'm like, God, this, so this is what it's like. And then you love us so much, you got all these other feasts coming up. I'm looking forward to Passover and all these other things. Because I'm like, man, we need to know this. The men need to know this to properly be the priest of their homes. To properly be the priest. We don't want the title. Because with that title, if there's no power, it's just you're just a figurehead. We want, if we're the priest of our home, we want to know that God hears us and we hear God. More importantly, we hear him. And we can instruct our families as necessary. Because that's what the change in this whole nation is going to need. Men and women, but men who are in their, the forefront, willing to take the, the bullets, willing to take the backlash and all that, protecting wives and children so that God's kingdom can move forward and advance in the, in the earth. So again, thank you, Apostle. I bless you for uh, allowing me to share. And um, thank you, Karina, for being an, an encouragement. <laughs> Your smile is contagious. And y'all have a blessed evening. Thank you. Don't go so quickly, Brother Watson. I, I'm so excited. I'm just letting y'all know that you know, I was yielding my time to the distinguished gentleman from Newport News because what he was saying was amazing. And so it was like, brother, you go ahead and talk because we need to hear from you. So this is this is what I want to share with you guys. So don't go anywhere, Brother Watson. We'll come right back to you. Um, this men's fellowship started in September, shortly after our consecration. Actually, it was directly after our consecration on September 12th. The Lord had put it on my husband's heart to start a men's fellowship. Um, because he really saw the need for it. And then, of course, after consecration, the, the return, the feast days, our household went into crazy warfare. And a new obligation arose in my husband's life, so he had to pull back from the men's fellowship. Brother Watson came forward, and he was like, I really believe it's on my heart to assist Elder Hassan with this. Because I know God still wants to do this. And, 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 and it blessed me so much, because this is what we've got to do in the kingdom. And, and ladies tend to do it. You know, you'll see women come up and support and hold each other's arms up. But to see the men do that, such a tremendous blessing. Because that's exactly what he's doing. He's like, I see God doing something. This has got to keep going. And he's just lifting up what God is doing. And so the men are gathering online for men's fellowship, second and fourth Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And there is a link in the description that you can click so that you can, you know, register so your husbands can register. If you're a man, you can register, young man, old man, any type of man. You don't have to be a part of this ministry or the invitation movement or anything to be connected. Just register so you can get the link um, and then join the men. And Brother Watson's going to be facilitating that. Second and fourth Tuesday, 7 p.m. Anything else you want to add about the men's fellowship, Brother Watson? I want to check with you before I say my little teeny short spiel. Because <laughs> it's just a little bit I'm going to say. Because you said almost everything that needs to be said tonight. Really, you did. Um, anything else you want to add about the men's fellowship? Well, not, nothing in, in, in its entirety. It's just the mere fact that I hope to actually interact, like physically interact with guys. I know they have this whole thing with the quarantine, social distancing and all that. But you don't see that happening in Walmart. You don't see that happening in the strip bars, actually, as a matter of fact. And so my thing is, fellas, uh, if you feel comfortable wearing a mask you wear a mask you know um but i'm wel welcoming you for us to get together and sit down and real talk and there's a brother who just texted me asked me what type of bible do you said that was again i said the complete jewish bible i have the complete jewish study bible if you want to go that deep he said okay but the bottom line is we're going to explore our heritage where we came from through the bible we're going to learn more about ourselves so i would like to do physical interaction from time to time not every week but we'll determine that once we get online and go from there Thank you. Amen. Well, again, don't go anywhere, Brother Watson, because uh, the Lord has put it on my heart for you to release the ironic at the end of tonight's uh, healing service. So go on and get yourself together because I really believe it's the Lord's will for what he's talking about tonight. Y'all, if, if you have noticed, the Lord has been tremendously strategic in our healing services. It's, it's kind of ridiculous how strategic he has been and lining up the report out, the exhortation. Like he told me last month that tonight we were supposed to talk about the foundation of the nation. And then Brother Watson is sharing this report out about what God is doing among the men. I'm going to tell y'all, if you've gone through the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America, you remember that that was our prayer point for this National Daniel Fast for last week. For the first week, we went through all seven issues of the Declaration of Kingdom Standards for the United States of America. And in the issue, I believe it's the second issue, you know, it's the third issue, 
family values and gay rights. Very important that you remember that third night, what the Lord revealed is that the foundation of the nation is always the family. And this is any nation. Any strong nation, kingdom, or community is going to be built upon the family. And the Lord himself has set order in the family. And it is not for a hierarchy or for subjugation. It's for order, specifically because the family unit is supposed to reveal God. It is the husband, the father, that represents God, the father in the household. It was Adam that God told to name the animals. Adam even named the woman. And it's so important that you get that because if you remember what Brother Watson was talking about, this authority that the men have, the reality is what a man calls a thing is what a thing will be. And this is so important that we get that because that's not the responsibility that a woman has. See, and this is so beautiful. We understand that we can actually do what God has told us to do in, 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 in the way that he's told us to do it. See, women, we are the nurturers. We, we move like and unto the Holy Spirit. So the mother, the wife is going to nurture, comfort, guide into all truth. This is what the Holy Spirit does. The, the, the mother, wife is going to represent her husband well. You see, this is so important, where there's going to be a oneness between the two of them that, that, that only the two of them will know if there's disagreement. See, this is how the Lord has set up that family union. So then children can come into this blessed environment without confusion, because there's one standard, there's an order, and there's agreement. And this is so important because the truth is it does start with the man. It starts with the husband, father. And as a strong, independent black woman, I have no problem saying that because it blesses me. And this is what's so important, ladies, when we really understand our design, being covered by our husbands, being led by men in the community. I'm telling you, women of God, we are praying for the men. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, the women of God are praying for the men, not because we believe that we're a second choice, that, you know, God would use a man if he had him. And we are uniquely designed for what we're called to do. When I minister, I minister as a mother. I minister out of my design. I'm supposed to do exactly what I'm doing. But... There is a role, a beautiful role that God has for the men that women can't fill. We're not designed to fulfill it. We're supposed to nurture what, what the man identifies into its place. So the man has to speak identity and purpose into the child, and then the mother can help the child nurture that identity and, and walk into it. But the identifying has to come from the man because the man plants the seed. Just like God the Father plants the seed of a vision. He had a vision. God had a vision for these United States of America. And he planted that seed in 1607 when we planted a Bible in the shores. The men on board, there was no women on board. The men on board who were desperate and thought they were gonna die and listen to Reverend Hunt and, and, and then started to fast when they were on those ships. Then they arrived in Virginia Beach and they planted, uh, uh, they, they, they buried the Bible in the sand and erected a cross and proclaimed, Lord, we want to dedicate this land to you. You guide us. And God gave a vision for this nation. And that vision was prayed two times a day at the Jamestown Fort, which was the third landing of the English settlers. And then they said, we need some women, y'all. <laughs> and they sent back to England to have the women brought over. And those women were uniquely qualified to be wives to those men. They knew exactly what they were signing up for. That is, it is a role, it's a responsibility God calls us to, to be a husband and father, to be a wife and mother. God calls us to something because we're representing an aspect of him when we do it. It's a calling. It's not something to go into lightly. And here's the reality. Every challenge we see in this nation, every social ill we see in the United States starts first with the family. Because the family is the foundation of this nation. And so I pray that God encourages you in your design. That he encourages you to be who he designed you to be. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to fulfill somebody else's role. That God is then able to empower you to be exactly what you've been designed to do after you receive some healing. See, this second week of the National Daniel Fast, y'all know what we're looking at. We're looking at the burnt offerings at, in the free workbook at burntoffering.org. That's what we're doing this week. And Watson is mentioning these burnt offerings to this whole report out. That wasn't a coincidence, y'all, that that's what we're looking at right now in the National Daniel Fast. He keeps saying, we're giving burnt offerings. We keep giving burnt offerings. We're giving burnt offerings. <laughs> this is all intentional because God is reminding us that he set us on this path. 
but this 21 days to transform us. He is trying to shift stuff we didn't even know needed to be shifted. And he's starting with us as individuals. He's dealing with our households because that is the foundation of the nation. And the truth is, as his agents in the earth, as his ambassadors, what we pray, what we confess, what we address, the things that we bind up, the things that we loose, it affects the entire spiritual atmosphere of our nation, and it will determine the course of our nation. We are at a crossroads. We have got to take this seriously. Get the healing that we need. If you're intimidated by a man and you're a woman, let God minister to you so that you can be empowered to be the woman he desired you to be. If you're a man and you're intimidated by a strong woman, let God heal you so that you can get what you need to get to be the man God designed you to be so that we can cooperate. Because that's what we see in Genesis chapter one. We see God the Father, we see God the Holy Spirit, and we see Yeshua. In the first three verses, in the beginning, God created, there's the Father. And the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. That's the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 3, God said, let there be light. There's Yeshua right there because he is the word of God. God said, and he is light. All three worked in cooperation to create everything over which God made us stewards. We're supposed to steward it like he's designed us to steward it. But we got to be healed to do it. Because brokenness in our own families. The, the societal norm that have risen up from all that brokenness has all taught us very different things, very different things. To be what God designed you to be is empowering. And it, it, and it will propel you forward into purpose so that you can change lives. You don't have to be something or someone else. Be who God designed you to be, but also know that even in everything we've just said, you're still going to need support from other people. Hence the men's fellowship. And ladies, you're not left out. A women's fellowship is going to start on January 7th of 2021. We're going to start a women's online fellowship too. Amen. And so God is doing a great work, but I praise God that he's starting with the men because that's order. <laughs> that's order. And we're going to support it and we're going to bless it and we're going to pray for our men. I'm telling y'all right now, I remember a season where I was interceding hard for the men in the truth and the spirit and the ministry that I lead. And when I started to intercede, this often happens, I started to feel the pressure that they feel, the temptation that they feel. And it was overwhelming. I remember saying to God, thank you for making me a woman because if I had to carry that, I don't think I could focus on any of the stuff you have me to do. That's a lot. That's a lot what they have to carry. The weight, the burden, the temptation, the pressure, the attacks, the all out attacks from the enemy because the enemy knows if he can address the head, which is the man, then everything else is going to be affected. He already knows that. And women, we've been holding down for it. Absolutely we have. But how empowered are we when we only have to do our job? We only have to do our role. How empowered are we to just be the women of God? That's who we're supposed to be. Let us just be the Holy Spirit. We're not supposed to be God the Father. Let us just be the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. I'm telling you because it's enough work. It's enough. <laughs> I ain't no, it is enough. <laughs> Praise God for what he's called each of us to. Let us cooperate, lift each other up, and then restore the foundation of our nation because we are restoring our identities. Our families are being restored. Our households are being restored. And really what God is designed to reveal in the family and in the nation, which is himself, will come forth. People need to see God. Let us start revealing him as individuals, as families, and as a nation. With that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Watson that he can close us out. If the Lord wants you to say anything else, feel free to do so. And then please bless us with the ironic. Amen. All of that exhortation, that blessed me. I don't think I need to say anything else. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's just go before the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Yabe veris meleka ya e yabe hana eleka behunika yesa yabe panar eleka be asen. Lika shalom, ve asin, lika shalom, 
Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh shine his face upon you. Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh look upon you and give you his shalom and give you his shalom. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a good evening.